Hi guys, so basically this video will be about Kirchhoff's Law. Specifically, I'll be working questions. Well, my last two questions will be from Unit 2 Physics, CAPE Study Guide, right? So I believe this book is really excellent. I use this to practice a lot. It was awesome. But this first question will just be a um, personal question to just basically understand the rules of Kirchhoff's Law and uh, well the both laws rather and uh, just to get us a bit more into it and then the other two questions will be directly from the study guides the only question that i'll mainly be working will be from the study guide right okay so this is the first question well this is my personal question so on this it's basically showing where we have uh, two loops, right? Basically, I drew this loop. So this is loop one, and this is loop two, right? And then, basically, we can say that the first law that state that the sum of the currents flowing into any point in a circuit equal to the sum of the current flowing out. So right here we can see where I1 plus I2 is going to equal to I3. So these currents coming into this junction right here is equal to the current flowing out. So this where I have this point right here is a junction. So the currents flowing in is equal to the currents flowing out so that's the first rule so hence i1 plus i2 can be equal to i3 which is what i have here for the first equation then the second one is basically where we're used utilizing the second law right so this law basically states that the algebraic sum of the emfs around any loop is equal to the sum of the pds around any loop so for me, I usually just choose any direction of my loop. I normally just choose this direction because I'm just most comfortable with it. It doesn't really matter. It simply means that if your answer though was negative, it means that the current was flowing in the other direction. But regardless of that, your answer is correct. So let's start with this first loop. So this is one over here so looking on this first loop we'll say that from starting from the battery this is the negative n we're going in the direction of my loop so this is the negative n and this is the positive n so from negative to positive this will be a positive 10 a positive 10 and then coming right here we would have four and i1 this would give me another voltage and since it's going in the direction of my loop it's going to result in a voltage drop hence i have negative 4 i1 right and then coming down now i have i3 and this 4 ohm resistor this would give me another voltage that's going in the same direction the current is going in the same direction as my loop therefore i'm gonna have a voltage drop so i'm gonna get negative 4 i3 then i reach the battery so i'm going from the positive to the negative terminal so it's gonna give me a negative 2 voltage and all of that is equal to zero right so all the voltage rises and voltage drop is equal to zero then let's look on our second loop right here so i usually just start from the battery again and right here we're going to have we're going from the positive to the negative end of the battery so i would say negative three volts and then i have a three ohm resistor and we're still having this I2 current flowing in it so it's flowing the current is flowing this way right therefore it's going the current is going in the opposite direction from my loop of my loop so 
it's going to result in a voltage rise therefore i'm going to have 3i2 come right here now i have i'm going from the negative to the positive end of the battery so i'm going to have two positive two volts right here going up we're going to four ohms resistor four ohms resistance and i3 and this current is going in the opposite direction of my loop so we're going to get a voltage rise hence i'm gonna have four i3 reach right here again 5i2 this current is going opposite in the opposite direction of my loop so it's a voltage rise so 5i2 and of course all of this sum to zero right okay so what we now have are are our three main equations that we need to, to solve the problem so what we're going to do is wherever we see i3 we're going to substitute it with i1 plus i2 which we can because, remember from the first law, we stated that I1 plus I2 gives I3. So wherever we see I3, we put I1 plus I2, right? Okay, so from our first, or, okay, so rather from our second equation, we had 10 minus 4I1 minus 4i3 minus 2 equals 0 and this was representing our first loop right so as i had said we're going wherever we see i3 we're going to put i1 plus i2 so 10 i1 plus i2 right then we're basically just going to expand this then we're going to group like terms there are lots of like terms so 10 minus 2 4 negative 4 i1 minus 4 i1 so that's negative 8 i1 then negative 4 i2 equals 0 just going to make um simplify this somewhere rather 8 minus 8 i1 minus 4 i2 gives 0 so just to let it look like a bit of more of a normal equation let's put it like this negative 8 i1 and we're moving the 8 over the equal sign so the positive 8 now becomes a negative 8 right okay so now this equation basically just turned into this equation right so that's great so now we're going to move on to this equation right here and wherever as i said we are that we see i3 we're going to put i1 plus i2 okay so this was the other loop equation Where do we see I3? I1 plus I2. Great. So we're just looking on this, right? We're not paying attention to anything else. So we're just going to expand this right here. So this long equation, like, just do not let it confuse you. Just focus on what exactly we're working at at the point in time so this becomes we're going to expand this for i1 and then this becomes for i2 plus 5 i2 right then looking at this now all we're going to do is group like terms this long equation it can look very simple just look on what looks similar so we have a negative three we we'll have a positive we just have negative three and positive two right as two like terms which is going to give you 
negative 3 plus 2, right? Then we can group this I2 right here. So positive 3 I2. Here is another I2. Here is another I2. Then here is just the single I1 by itself. Then this negative 3 plus 2 is going to give you negative 1. 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, so 12 I2 plus 4 I1 gives 0. We're going to just let this look like a nice little fraction. I like to put I1s first, so 4 I1 plus 12 I2. Then we're just going to carry over this negative 1 over the equal sign, so it becomes a positive 1. So there we have our second loops equation okay so our first loop equation was negative 8 i1 minus 4 i2 gives negative 8 and the second equation was 4 i1 plus 12 i2 gives 1 so basically we can solve for i1 and i2 by using simultaneous equation right so Look for the common factors. I normally look for the small, smallest numbers. So 8 and 4, right? So if I multiply 4 times 2, I can get 8. And if I multiply negative 8 by... Okay, so if we look here now, we're going to multiply all of these, the first one by 1. So it will just simply be everything just the same. Then we're multiplying the second equation by 2, so this will give us 8i1 plus 24i2 times 1 is 2. Then how we solve for simultaneous equations, now we're going to add both of them. So negative 8 plus 8 kind of just give you 0, so you can cross that out. Then negative 4 plus 24 give you 20 and I have back i2 and negative 8 plus 2 will give you negative 6 so i2 will give you negative 6 divided by 20 so that is negative 0 0.3 amps okay so okay so the best thing about reaching here is that from you have I2, you can definitely find the others. So I'll just use the simpler equation to get my I1. So I'll use this one. So for I1 plus 12 I2 gives me 1. But if I can solve for I1 by basically seeing 12. Minus 3.6 gives 1. And then this 4 you divide it by 1 would be equal to 1.15 amps. So, yes, we get. I want to be 1.15 amps and then right here now once we have I1 and I2 we can definitely find I3 because I3 is equal to I1 plus I2 so I1 plus I2 gives I3 we had said that I1 is 1.15 amps I2 is negative 0.3 amps so I3 is equal to 0 0.85 amps. That's I3. So there we are. It's solving for all three cards.